Well, I was all ready to do this bug design. Um, I had actually checked out a book from the library and I found a really cool wing shape of something called a tomato hornworm moth. Um, I don't think the wings totally unfurled in that drawing there, but um, it was a pretty cool wing and I also had um, found a bug on the wall and it turns out to be some kind of a plume moth. And I opted for this one just because it has more of a glider uh, kind of a wing, higher aspects ratio, and I went so far as to get the scale I wanted and um, was going to begin on that. But then I remembered the issue of having a very short nose. I had tried to build a dragonfly once before and had this issue. It requires having quite a bit more weight than if this were further out and had a, a leverage advantage. I was going to try and solve that by making these antennae out of a paper clip and just trying to be extremely light um, with everything that's behind the center of gravity. In the end, I thought if I'm going to be a little bit frustrated and a little bit challenged, I may as well go all the way. So I think I'm going to try and make this Quetzalcoatlus. And I found some paper that I forgot I even had. I think I'll use these colors. It uh, has a little texture on it, but that shouldn't impact too much. And I'll use the lighter one for probably some kind of accent. And it'll be a good experiment because I've never really built anything with uh, the main wing um, at the back. And I'll have to make some kind of canard. Um, won't be terribly realistic. The body probably won't be all that three-dimensional, and I'll have to add a vertical stabilizer, but um, it'll capture the, the basic shape of a Quetzalcoatlus. So I better figure out uh, what I'm going to cut out first. So what I'm doing now, I'm just looking at the picture on the computer screen, and I'm, I'm drawing out the wing shape. I did a feathered dragon, which essentially is what Quetzalcoatlus is, feathered serpent gods. But that's okay. The, uh, the idea, of, again, of a plane having the main wing in the back is um, what's intrigued me about this, I think. So I've decided, actually, that I don't like that wing shape very much. It comes down uh, too quickly here, so I'm going to try again. So there's the wing, and I now need to decide how I'm going to give it strength. And I could use wood. I've done that um, on designs, usually when they have a larger wingspan than this. So I think even though this is kind of um, flimsy material, I think I'm going to avoid using wood. And I'll use some of this pretty sturdy chipboard that I have. You know, you can get this from uh, old pasta boxes or cracker boxes. Be very careful if you're going to use a utility knife or a mat knife. You want something that's not going to skid too easily. Um, protect the surface of whatever it is that you're cutting on your table or whatnot. And metal, of course, otherwise your blade will dig into the ruler. Hold the material down very firmly so it doesn't slide. And if your blade is sharp, you shouldn't have to apply a ton of pressure. Finish these with a sharper blade uh, that I have on hand here. And I just use whatever craft glue or wood glue I have on hand, but it's not very smart. But this stuff is non-toxic. I never really have to worry about getting it on my fingers. I should probably establish that just a little more. and raise this by about 25 degrees and just let it dry for a while. So that's probably it for today. Okay, back to it. I did a few things off camera. I'm glad that this is uh, remembering the angle a little bit as it's dried. I just traced the front of that wing and I, I made a piece that's gonna go over here and cover up the support. Another piece will go here. I can trim that out. Balsa wood and uh, some chipboard. You'll see how those come together fairly self-explanatory, and just uh, layered up some chipboard to make a general shape of the head. I'll, I'll do some reinforcing here, and then I'll actually need to attach this before that layer goes on. Being fairly liberal with the glue here. And I accept from the get-go that um, this head and this neck may suffer some fairly severe damage at some point. that I actually need to cut a little material out of the center section here so that um, as the wing bends it can kind of move in such a way 
that across this length it's it's not going to be forcing things into a warp or a crinkle and this is going to be messy but there's no getting around that and voila all right now we're getting somewhere I'm cutting these pieces um, to cover first the bottom of the body and I can uh, use a pencil or a pen to give them some initial form this first one was a little tricky I had to make um, a little relief cut here and one there and taper this a little so it would come down I'm allowing it to dry and bond a little first and I'm just uh, using my fingers and now I need to put a canard here. This is where I'm venturing away from the actual biology of the creature. Then I'll have to worry about weight and everything uh, afterwards and where I'm going to put uh, vertical stabilizers. Or perhaps just one vertical stabilizer. Could, for that matter, be on the bottom and that might actually help with throwing it. That's one thing. Uh, that works okay. I think I can throw it just grabbing the body. So now, just as I had done with the wing, I made a template. I will trace it. Um, these will be double layer vertical stabilizers. It seems like uh, most canard aircraft that I can find in image searches online, they have the vertical stabilizers out here, and I don't really have that option because of the pointed wingtips. So I'm going to go about two thirds out from the center line and put them here, and hopefully that will uh, work. After I do some test flights, I can maybe get a better sense of where the center of gravity is supposed to be. Um, this is fairly big. I could probably trim off material here if it turns out that it's too nose heavy. Uh, if it's too tail heavy, I'll probably just add um, some more cardstock around in these areas um, for additional strength and the weight that I need. So that's about it. You saw just a handful of the numerous times that it nosed into the ground and I had actually built an imperfection into it without realizing it I put the canard airfoil too far forward on a slope and that was causing it to pitch down so I had to use a lot of uh, deflection of the control surfaces to try to overcome that and overall it was fighting itself in the air so I needed a new canard airfoil and I made it a little smaller because I suspected it was the whole thing a bit nose heavy and I moved it further back which would also help with that issue but primarily because I needed it to be on a flatter part of the head where it would be basically on the same plane as the main wing and any tendency to pitch down at this point could be overcome with just a little bit of uh, deflection. Here I removed the old canard uh, which was fine because the nose actually needed a little repair by this point anyway and scraped off old material and did a little sanding and went about rebuilding the nose. The new airfoil had a partial third layer on the bottom flush with the leading edge because I needed that to be extra sturdy since it's always uh, impacting things. And I added just a tiny vertical fin, put it as far back as I could uh, to help just a bit with yaw stability. I also added a second layer of cardstock under the legs and filled in that gap back there which I think also was causing problems. The dot represents where the center of gravity ended up and I think it was in just about the right place. <laughs> 